My name is Neil Dykeman, and I'm running for United States Senate. I'm the Libertarian nominee in 2018 for Texas. Tonight, we're going to talk a little bit about my policies, my views on the issues. And if I miss one, it's okay. Send us a note, we'll add it to the next episode. The debt and the federal deficit. I'm a fiscal conservative. At heart, I believe that job number one of the federal government, our elected officials, pass the budget, manage the budget, manage my money responsibly. I give you tax dollars, you work for me, you're supposed to make sure that those get spent well. Borrowing 20% of every dollar and running up debt levels we haven't seen since World War II to the tune of 340,000 in total liabilities at the federal level per American family, that's not it. You've had your chance. It's time for us to stop kicking the can down the road anymore. National defense. I'm in favor of a strong national defense. There's a generation that grew up, in fact, they're gonna be kids voting, young folks voting for the first time that have never actually lived when we were not at war. That's not how I want my three-year-old and five-year-old growing up. Abortion rights. This is a big topic right now because we're watching a Supreme Court justice go through the nomination process. I'm pro-choice. I understand very well the issues and the perspectives and the view of many of my friends that are pro-life. But there's a lot of things that I don't think the government needs to be sticking their nose in. And that choice is between you, your family, and God. Next topic I'd like to make sure that you and I are on the same page with is the role of federal government. And I get asked this a lot. I believe our Constitution was a state-to-state -state deal. The federal system. The bulk of all work ought to be done at state and local letter levels where they're close enough for us to touch them. Frankly, you should only do at federal levels that which we've already given the government, federal government, the authority and responsibility to do, and that which cannot be best done at the state or local level. We should not be running dollars from our citizens up through the federal government, back down to state and local levels through a series of backroom deals and grants and earmarks and all sorts of other issues, you know, ways to distribute money, basically to try and affect behavior from Washington. In fact, if we have any opportunity, we should do it locally. Privacy. I think we need a National Privacy Protection Act. This is 2018, this isn't 1995. The technology that we've got today is absolutely amazing. It's amazingly cool and amazingly dangerous. And we need to make sure that our government and everyone in it fully understands you don't get to be in the business of invading my privacy. It's my data, not yours. You work for me, not the other way around. And all of our corporations need to have very clear guidelines on what data is mine, what privacy means, and how to manage it. Today, the EU is the recognized leader on privacy for citizens. It's the EU. It shouldn't be leading us on anything. Gun control. In the wake of a whole mass of school shootings over the last decade, gun control continues to be a hot button issue for a lot of families. Safe schools really matters to me. But I don't believe that adding some additional federal gun control is the answer. In fact, I think what we'd do if we took a knee-jerk reaction and just started blanketing new gun control laws at the federal level, what we'd do is we found, we'd find that we just took away the incentive and the responsibility of the states and the communities to fix their own problems. I have a three-year-old and a five-year-old who are just starting school now. But going back and unwinding the Second Amendment, eroding what our founding fathers believed was the final arbiter of protection for all of us, that's not the solution here. We need to find a solution to our safe schools and protect our Second Amendment. Immigration. I've been voting since I was 18, 42 now. The entire time I've been voting, we've been talking about immigration. When I was in college, we were talking about immigration. The issues and concerns we're talking about are the same now as they were then, yet we're still talking about it. In two decades, Congress hasn't done anything. In fact, in this election cycle, we had a lot of media attention paid here down in Texas and across the rest of the country for separating children at the border. The, our immigration policy is a policy that doesn't work for the left and it doesn't work for the right. What we're doing today does not work. We've needed comprehensive immigration reform for decades, but neither main party has been willing to put in the political capital to get it done. We don't need any more Band-Aids. We need our laws enforced, and we need more immigration. 
We were built on immigration, legal immigration, but we were built on it. Our economy, our culture, the whole concept of America as a melting pot. It's time Congress got its act together. Stop blaming the executive branch and waiting for the judicial branch and simply did their job and fixed a really bad system. Healthcare, another topic that's near and dear to my heart for exactly the same reason. I have a three-year-old and a five-year-old. We're in a system where, despite the fact that we have amazing doctors and amazing hospitals, our funding system is completely broken. It's based on a 1940s tax deal set up during World War II, creating a tax break for corporations to deduct health insurance, but never giving that same tax deal to the individuals that got our insurance industry addicted to working for the companies and our doctors and hospitals addicted to working for the insurance companies. And in a system where they all work for each other and no one works for you, the system just doesn't work. Costs continue spiraling out of control. In 2018, your health care is still tied to your job. Your health care should not be tied to your job or your government. And no, the answer isn't single payer. We already have a four payer system. Three companies in every state basically control the market, plus Medicare and, so and, and Medicaid. We don't need to go from four to one. That doesn't solve the cost problem. It might solve price, but if we don't solve cost, you know what happens? You fix price, costs keep going up, service declines. We've always known that. We need to move the opposite direction, to a true free market, to a million payer system, where you can buy the insurance directly from the companies, directly from the insurance company, without going through your employer where you can buy service and choose your own doctor independent of the insurance company. No more special networks. Insurance is just insurance. The tax break is yours, not your company's. Let's rewrite this. Single payer was a bad idea in the 70s. It's a bad idea in 2018. Education. As you can probably figure out by now, given that I have a three-year-old and five-year-old, education is going to be important to me. And it's also one that I believe is not actually a federal issue, not something you should be asking a senator about. Back to my earlier comment, we shouldn't be running money or standards up through Washington back down to Texas. In fact, the people that I want educating my daughter are already educating my daughter. They're amazing principals and amazing teachers you know, in amazing schools. I just want them to be responsible and accountable. I want local control, local rules, local standards, local funding. I want to be able to walk down to the school board and actually meet the people who have the final say and authority and decision on making sure that my child is educated. And if they can't do the job, I want to be able to go to a different school. I don't want to be restricted to a school based on where I bought my house. I'm Neil Dykeman. I'm the Libertarian nominee for United States Senate from Texas in 2018.